I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data analytics and data engineering. In this episode, we're going to talk about database transactions and how database transactions are a very important part of, of how you manage your data uh, in your programming, but also all the transactions that you handle to maintain integrity in your database and among all the different tables. Uh, but also to help to control your program flow uh, in case you have some kind of errors or things like that uh, that come up and you may have a big group of statements that you want all, all of them to go through at once or none at all and uh, in, when you have a case like that, that's when you want to use a database transaction. So without further ado, let's get to our database transactions. Okay, so what I'd like to show you first is the Three, three little tables that I created in my YouTube stuff database just to show uh, that I created a person, company events, and person transaction table. And note that those first name and last name uh, um, fields have been arbitrarily made very small uh, just to demonstrate what might happen if we had a field uh, that could cause an error in our script. So I created a script and you can see there's a person ID that's an integer I, create, I insert you know, a person into my person table with the name John Smith. Both of those are under eight characters. And then I grab the ID uh, from my insert because it's an auto number or a identity. And I insert, and now I insert an event um, just to show that um, my procedure is gonna insert something that's not related to the person insert. So it has nothing to do with the, with the uh, identity or anything like that. Um, so it's a completely different insert and then the last statement is related to the first one and uh, and it inserts a transaction which gives a person a credit of a thousand so if I run that and everything's fine then that's great you can see that uh, I was able to run that and I created all all three records one in each table and that kind of uh, procedure would work fine or, or set of statements would work fine and so, uh, uh, but what if I go back, I'm gonna delete those. So I'm just gonna delete from each of those tables. And, <clears throat> and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, create a problem. So say there's some problem with this first statement and we'll make the, the last name longer than the last name field. It could be anything. It could be an integer field that's too small for the value that you're putting in or, or it could be a constraint problem um, related to your database. So it could be anything that'll cause an error. And now if we run it, now we've got a problem because our SQL set of SQL statements ran, but the first one didn't make it in, but the second two did make it in, and that could cause a lot of problems. And as you can see in our example here, uh, you can see that the, the last name was too long for that field that only had eight characters available. Now, that would never happen in real life. This is just for example. Most people would make that field quite long. Uh, but now you can see that there's no record in the first table, uh, but there is a record in the third table, uh, which is wrong. And we've also got um, the non-associated insert that went in saying person added when that wasn't actually true. So now I'll delete those records just to, uh, to show how we can use a transaction. Um, we'll program it inside a transaction now. Now we'll show what we should do when we have a bunch of statements um, that depend on each other that should either go all of them or none of them. And so uh, in this case, we'll, we'll use a transaction and uh, we're gonna start that uh, by saying uh, begin transaction. Now, since there's a variable there, I'm gonna uh, just dip down here and put it below so that our, our uh, declare statement is above our transaction. And uh, so what I'll do here is I'll say a begin transaction, then I'll give the transaction a name. And I'll say, uh, we're gonna use a try catch uh, block here. So we'll, we'll say begin try, and then we'll put all of our SQL statements inside of that. And then uh, what we'll do after that is uh, we'll say at the end of those, after, um, after the end statement, we'll say end try. And then we're gonna say commit transaction um, uh, after our statements go through so that they're actually committed uh, in the database uh, once everything is fine. 
So if they all go through just fine and there's no errors, then this uh, transaction will, will go through. So after we put in our begin and end try uh, block, then we can put in our begin catch block, <clears throat> our catch block, and that's going to um, handle what, you know, if there's an error, then it's going to jump to our catch block. And the first thing we'll say is uh, we're going to roll back our transaction, uh, my transaction. Um, and, uh, and we'll also, just for, uh, for demonstration's sake, we'll insert an event, just like we did for the, if it, you know, if this transaction worked, uh, we said person added, but in this case we'll say error, you know, and uh, something bad happened, or you can catch, you can put all kinds of data into your error, <clears throat> your error log or whatever it is that you want that it was too long for, uh, the values were too long, and so it generated an error. And so now if we run this and there's a problem, it's gonna basically um, generate an error log and that's what we want. So if we hit F5 on that and, uh, and we see what happens here, uh, you can see that there were zero rows affected in the first part because there is a problem. And then there was a row uh, in the, uh, that was affected and that's gonna be our company events, uh, our error insertion. Uh, saying that something bad happened and and now uh, now now we can see that so now we don't have um, there's no record in the first or third which are dependent on each other and there's no um, unassociated record saying person added but we do have an error uh, error record in there which is what we want um, and so that's how we can do that and now if instead if I change it to Smithson which is eight characters and I hit F5 uh, you can see that there's three rows affected, and those will be our three rows that um, that happen when there is a, a good transaction that happened. And as you can see, uh, we do have our person added uh, event that happened, as well as the uh, the person transaction for a thousand, and the person was created uh, with the ID seven, which matches our our identity field uh, up above there. And that's how you do transactions in SQL Server. I hope you enjoyed today's discussion about database transactions in SQL Server and I uh, hope that you can use these techniques in your project to make uh, your project better. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up and uh, make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't su subscribed yet. And uh, click the bell when you see the bell so that you'll be notified of any uh, new content that I put up on the channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please make sure to put them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to try and answer any questions that you might have about uh, database transactions and how they work in SQL Server. Uh, have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.